Top 5 Tour, helping you find the best. I'm currently in the beautiful Cadrona Valley, right between Wanaka and Queenstown. We've got a little bit of rain. I'm with Desiree, who set up the Cadrona Distillery. So about uh, two and a half years ago now? That's right, two and a half yeah. years ago we, um, we first distilled on this site. Now you've got an interesting history. You were a dairy farmer. Yes. You went into a distillery. Yes. Why? Uh, oh, some, something bad happened and so you do a whole lot of soul searching when, in those sorts of times of your life. And so I started making lists of ideas of what I wanted to do. Short lists, researched them, scrapped a lot, started over again and, uh, and whiskey found its way onto that list and really took hold. Um, and that was, so it took two and a half years to, to research and to understand how to distill um, quite a large education process. Um, yeah. Which well, you you'd trained all around the world, didn't you? Scotland yes. and America? And yes, yeah. And uh, at the end of that two and a half years, May 13, um, you know, you can have a dream, but at some point you've got to decide whether you're going to follow that dream or it was just going to stay a dream. And so May 13, I drew a line in the sand and um, sold my farm to move to Wanaka to find the site at Cadrona. And you had previously worked at a bar in London, is that correct? And that's yeah, where you sort of was, got this interest in yeah, whiskey. Tw age twenty twenty one, um, I'd taken a break, uh, break part way through my degree, and uh, I um, ended up running a bar in Chelsea, on Old Church Street, and so it was a, a, a lovely, a lovely bar. Um, whiskey wasn't very fashionable at the time, but we had a lovely range of whiskies, yeah. and the, most of the drinkers were older, older men. Yeah. Like old men, and uh, but the it was the bottles and the labels and the colours that fascinated me, and that really sparked my interest. Yeah. So that was the beginning. And Scottish background also. So a visit to Scotland really got you. Yeah, a long, long time ago. So, as an I'd be sixth generation New Zealand from Scotland on yeah, both yeah. sides. Uh, but Mum came over for my twenty first first birthday, and we took a backpacking trip up around Scotland. And one of the first visits that we made was to Edradour, which yeah. at the time was the smallest distillery in Scotland. So while I couldn't hand on heart say that I sat there and thought I'm going to open a distillery one day. That's probably the interest where the, was, yeah, yeah, yeah interest was there. The, now, with whiskey, of course, um, the environment and the water is particularly important. Yes. Now, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because behind us is your water source. Yes, yeah, so Mount Cadrona, and she's got a nice sprinkling of snow on her this morning, which and is fantastic. And we're getting, we're getting some more rain for the whiskey at <laughs> yeah, the moment. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, so that water is, is beautiful water. Um, uh, it's it's soft water, which is similar to to Scotland. Um, so if you're making bourbon, for example, you would want hard water. Single malt, you want soft water. It's right. quite interesting. Um, and and this water is particularly beautiful. The other thing about this area is, um, once once the spirit has been put into the barrel, it it sits for ten years, and the angel share evaporates out of the cask, and that that space that's left is filled by the the local air, and so what fills the local environment fill, then fills the cask and interacts with the whiskey, wow. and and then that shapes the character of the whiskey forever. So, the people that are extremely good can pick up the notes of if you've got pine in the area, for yeah, example, yeah. or or roses, or um, then that will that will be present in the whiskey You're, as well. Oh, fantastic! So we needed a beautiful environment, a, a pristine environment. And it is. It's such an amazing valley, isn't it? It really it is. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're very lucky today to actually have an early tasting of the whiskey. So um, for a whiskey to be whiskey three years, three years. Um, yeah. But people can actually buy a barrel. Yes, they so can. So a, a two hundred. There's a two hundred liter and a bigger. And a five hundred. Five hundred, and that will be a ten year process. Yes. Yeah. But you've already had experts tasting yeah, it already, yeah. and very very positive, and it has got a very unique local. Uh, flavour profile. Can you tell it me a little is, bit about that? Um, After we have a taste, let's have a little. So this is this is very special to be tasting this now. Very fruity, very fruity nose. And of course, it is cast strength, so it's quite it's quite strong. I would still say a fruity for me, a very fruity sort of, and a, and a lingering. Strong flavour flavour no, profile, a, but I am not an expert, so let me let me what, let, let me hear got, what the expert said. Well, you've got a great palate, and uh, and <laughs> oh, thank when, you. <laughs> and that fr that fruitiness that you're picking up is um, 
kind of like your grandmother's Christmas cake. Yeah, um, like that's a, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's um. So this has been matured in an ex sherry butt um, from the south of Spain. Yep. That's where that note's coming from. But there is a richness as well, which is the underlying spirit. And so we we did have two experts out just uh, quite recently, actually, to to taste. They got to open anything they wanted, which was Christmas for them, I think. Oh, and I imagine, uh, yeah. and their, um, they were they were impressed with the spirit, which it was wonderful news to us. And the the underlying spirit character that they um, came up with for Cadrona is borage flower honey and yep. the the two experts were Dave Broom and Charlie McLean so we were wrapped because they're two, two extremely the well the known yeah. yeah wow yeah but I mean it's 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 that's a really nice sign isn't it that it's so uh, so yeah. early on yeah. yes no we're delighted absolutely delighted yeah and so people can buy the barrels yes um, I will mention one price because I thought it sounded very reasonable for the 200 litres Twelve thousand New Zealand dollars, which yes. in everywhere else in the world is not a lot of money. But you know, I think probably ten thousand Australia, or not not so much now. But it's a very seems a very reasonable price. Um, who are you finding uh, you are buying that? Are you getting a, an international audience, but also like local people? A combination. Uh, so a lot of New Zealanders um, ha- are very strongly interested in Cadrona and and also right around the world actually we have we have owners in germany in the united kingdom and singapore and china a lot quite a few in australia yeah, yeah. and also um the united states we haven't got any no cars gunners from canada yet but uh yeah but yes yeah, so it's spread right through the world yeah yep yeah. now you're not only doing the whiskey you're also doing gin and some liqueurs um what i loved about with your gin is that you're using rose hip yes. that was planted here by the Chinese during the gold rush mm-hmm. um, and, and just harvesting the local rose hip. Yes, yeah. that's right. So uh, the, the Chinese, it was late 1800s and they bought the rose hip to the Cadrona Valley while they were gold mining here for a source of vitamin C. And so we, we, we picked that wild. It's um, really thrived uh, right through central Otago, the rose hip. And so um, we picked that wild, and that's distilled into our gin. Yeah, and and the award you won in New York? Oh, we won a, the New York World Wine and Spirits Competition. We won a gold medal there. Wow. Yeah, so we're really and, and thrilled. And in what year? That was 2016. So that was we'd that was right from the word go. Wow. We'd, so there's something about this area that's turning out. Well, the, well, well <laughs> we can see it. The source. Gold in the hills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic! Um, and and the other spirits you have, you have uh, an orange. So or we make a we make a single malt vodka, um, which uh, bears my maiden name, Reed, uh, the Reed, and so that is a a, a vodka, harps back to traditional vodka. Really, uh, the, the modern vodkas are, are, are neutral and have very little taste or flavour. This one has character. Um, uh, there's an old saying, Russian saying, "Potato for the peasant, rye for the czar." So. Um, that was about the character that the raw ingredient would bring to the vodka. Yep. Um, so potato was quite bland, being most mostly water. Yep. Um, rye quite peppery, the same way a rye whiskey is quite peppery. And uh, ours being malted barley as as the source is, is sweet with tropical notes, tropical fruit notes on it, and 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 a beautiful luscious weight almost on the tongue, which is just divine, particularly in a in a. A vodka well, martini. My, my, or, my, yeah. I'm salivating listening to yeah. you talk. <laughs> and, and an orange liqueur, some other liqueurs yes, too. Yeah, yeah. so um, we call our uh, orange liqueur uh, Rose Rabbit, yeah. which is named for the two most successful colonists in the valley, the, the roses, the, so the, the rose hip, the yeah, roses and, and the, the rabbits. rabbits yeah. 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 People can visit the distillery and you have a tour. Can yes, you tell me a little yeah. bit about so that? So we, uh, we offer tours every seven days a week. Um, first tour leaves at 10 a.m. They're on the hour. The last tour leaves at 3 p.m. So 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. And that includes tasting. Yes, it does. So two should tasting at yeah, the end. Yeah. Fantastic. And your distillery team, your sister is on the. So it is yeah, very much a family is, business. She, my sister is one of the distillers. Uh, we have we have three distillers. Um, the head distiller Sarah Elsom, uh, and then my sister Raywin Reid. And then a, a young fellow chemical engineer actually uh, kits Clinton Baker, yeah. and they do a fantastic job. Then over in the warehouse, we have Alan Humphreys who looks after all the casks, so yeah. very important man. <laughs> and the equipment you've got here, I mean, this is a big operation. You really um, haven't hold, held back with regard to, you've got equipment from Scotland, from Germany. Yes. Um, 
biggest, we're the biggest in New Zealand and we're a, we're a pinprick. We're tiny. We're like a grain of sand compared to the distilleries in Scotland, for example. But So we're a miniature version, um, even though we are New Zealand's largest. Um, so yes, the, the stills were made for us by fourth generation coppersmiths up in Rothes on the yeah. top of Scotland. Um, and actually, uh, Richard Senior, Richard Forsyth Senior, came and opened the distillery um, back back uh, when we, we just after we commissioned. So that was really wonderful. He's number ten in the Whiskey Hall of Fame. So wow. we were just really honoured with that. Um, the mash tun was also made by by the Forsyth family, and then the a column still, which we make our vodka, a single malt vodka, and also the base spirit, the 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 grain spirit for our gin and for our liqueurs um, that's made on a German column still. Yeah. Well Desiree, thank you for your time. I yeah. won't we won't I won't keep you out here any longer. It is a bit chilly today. Um, but that fresh bite that fresh air, you know, like this is what this is what's making the this area so special. It's a beautiful area and thank yeah. you for your time and good luck in the future. You, you seem to be doing everything everything <laughs> right so early on. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thanks yeah. Mark. Thank you. Eat, drink, sleep, do shop. We handpicked the best of each location. Top 5 Tour, helping you find the best.